this is Eric Dick. Uh, I'm here for the Robust Marketer and iStack training with another of a very special podcast series that we're doing with e-commerce all-stars here in Atlanta, Georgia. So, so far in the series, we've had Nick Peroni on, Captain, Captain Ecom, to discuss uh, the basics of e-commerce strategy. What's working right now? What distribution methods work? What product ideas are, are kind of going? Uh, and and the, the mindset that you want to approach these things with. Uh, then we had Ben Malal on, and he, he had an, a similarly double-pronged attack on Facebook ads, how you think about scaling, how you think about testing Facebook ads, uh, and then also how to think of the whole creative funnel uh, while you're running e-commerce products. So the third of the, the core essential uh, skills that go into e-commerce in my mind are, is the topic of analytics. And so analytics isn't the most sexy topic, uh, but there are key metrics that you have to stay on top of as an e-commerce entrepreneur uh, in order to, to make your money uh, you know, last the longest, scale the farthest, and, uh, and, and who doesn't like saving money? Uh, so today we have a very special guest, uh, a friend of mine, Dimitri Skiatis, uh, who I met two years ago now in Berlin when you were speaking at the Affiliate World Conference. And right away, I, I knew this guy was uh, just a good vibes factory. Uh, what I didn't know at the time until I actually saw him speak was that he's also a high-level Google Analytics expert. So he's been in the industry for almost eight years now, starting in the world of Google AdWords and Google Analytics for some of the world's biggest brands. Since then, he's gone on to form his own agency where he runs the AdWords and the Analytics uh, for some other exciting e-commerce projects. He's got a really great mindset when it comes to Google Analytics and how essential it is. He's also, as I say, just a good vibes factory. So welcome to the Robust Market. Thank you. Dimitris. Great to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. It's good to see you. Awesome. Nice. So just let's start with uh, your sort of story in a nutshell. I know you've, you've got a pretty interesting story. And, and now, I, you know, on my Oprah's Couch in interview series here, I haven't made anyone cry yet. So I'm hoping with you we'll oh, get yeah. there. But start by telling me, you know, how you've come to, to where you are today, traveling from Greece, what, a 30-hour flight here uh, to Atlanta <laughs> to, to, to join us here? So. Almost. And you know, we are, as Greeks, we can be really, really emotional, so I don't like to cry on camera. So anyways, uh, I come from a background that uh, I'm Greek, born and raised, I've been there all my life, and I love my country. And I love the people there, but there's one really big, I wouldn't say disadvantage, but there's one thing that I never liked. Like the mentality of the people is like, go to school, get good grades, like go to college, uh, then go get a good job. And then when you're 65, you can enjoy life. And I was always like, really? What the heck, man? Like, is this what really is, uh, life is about? So I was working all my life as an assistant accountant, and that's uh, one of the things that not many people know so i was really good with numbers and then i realized like it was i remember december 2009 that is this what my life is going to be so i started looking ways to make money online i started reading a lot and blah 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 but i had that poor uh, mindset that poor mentality that if you want to make money you have to work for it so i was happy when i was making like uh, working with a client and making an extra like maybe two three hundred bucks and that's it and that was the moment when I realized that, no man, like, there's got to be another way. So I started attending events uh, here in the United States and actually three years ago, it was one of my very first events that I started attending because I was seeing people uh, and I thought that back at the day that I was seeing people attending the events, all these big marketers, and I thought that it was all, it was all about the techniques and the strategies. Mm -hmm. And yes, they are really super important, but it's all about networking and meeting the right people. So I was working at the time, a nine to five job. Uh, it was uh, at an agency. I was learning a lot. I was working with really cool brands. But the thing is, I wasn't happy. So I took the leap of faith, I quit my job after I attended an event in, uh, in Florida. And then how do you know, Greece again played a super big important role, uh, role in my life where capital controls happened. So it meant that we, can't, we couldn't really take money out of the bank. I couldn't run any Facebook ads, no Google ads. I lost all my money. I this lost was my the client. government lockdown, the right? Government the government yeah. lockdown. We could only take like 60 euros, like 70, 80 bucks per day uh, from the ATMs. And that was it. So I was this close from getting depressed. For three months in a row, I was making zero dollars per month. But then I said, you know what? I was with my back against the wall. I said, I need to do something. So I had that good skill uh, that I was running the Google AdWords campaigns and blah, 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 uh, all these kind of good things. 
And I pick up the phone and I was so anxious to say that, hey, you know what, I have this agency and I want to run these ads for you. So I started looking for jewelry, uh, irons, whatever jerseys, and I would start to see mistakes in their ads. So I would call them and say, hey, I'm really interested in that jersey. By the way, you have a mistake in your ad. They were like, oh, really? This is why you called me? No, 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 I, this is not the reason why I called you. But yeah, obviously that was the reason. So I got my first client for 250 bucks per month, and then I got the next one and the next one. And then I started shaping up my agency. And that the magic happened when I started, after I attended the event, I realized that I was really good at what I was doing, like teaching others and helping others. So that was the break point when I started realizing that I have to jump in the groups. I started asking, I started answering all the questions from uh, people inside the group. Then people invited me to webinars. I started making free videos, podcasts, interviews. And that was the moment where people actually started inviting me to events to speak. So I went from this really normal guy, super normal guy, not believing in himself. And for the past three years, I've been traveling the world. I've been meeting awesome people. So God bless the internet and Facebook. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's really it. So talk about that, that leap of faith. Was it just this feeling before when you were working, you know, as an accountant or even as a uh, you know, an AdWords analytics professional at agencies, was it just sort of this nagging feeling that there, that there had to be more? Or like, did you, did you long for freedom? Like, what, what, what was it that, that was there a, a straw that broke the camel's back? Honestly, uh, there was one thing that I couldn't stop thinking. Like, I remember being in the agency and I remember like it was like 3, 4 p.m. and I was already tired. I really wanted to go home because I wasn't productive anymore. But no, the agency life told me that I have to stay there till 7 p.m. So they would literally pay me money for things and I wasn't even productive. Like I, I waited and I was looking at my clock and I said, I have to pass the time. So that was one of the feelings that I didn't really want. And I was looking all these marketers, you know, friends, because I started uh, following all these people online. Uh, seeing people and uh, you know it, it's really funny because when you first see it you you're all about the money right and and I want the money and more money and the luxury cars but when you get inside to meet the people you realize that money is the last thing you need to worry so when you get when you get inside this um, let's say industry and you get to meet the people you realize that they're just people like you they have really good stories and for me, that was always the kind of thing. I didn't know it at the time, but I was looking at the people and I said, man, this guy has a really good life. He's at the beach right now, but while I'm here working. So that was the first thing that, and I recently, it's really funny because I recently wrote a post on my Facebook, but for 32 years in my life, I'm 35 right now, for 32 years in my life, everyone told me what to do. And I didn't want that. Like, life is really short. We're all going to die. I, I think it's, it's not a great story to sell that we're all going to die. Yeah. But eventually, we have only one life to live. And I cannot get to tell me that someone else di dictating me how to live or what can I do with my free time. So that was the moment I got married. And I said, really, is this how my life is going to be? Like working for someone else that I don't want to work paying me money that was job money. Yeah. Okay. And I really, I live in Greece, right? So yeah. making 1300 bucks per month yeah, is yeah. considered being well paid. No, yeah. but you have to change your mindset. That's it. I'll do whatever I can in my mind. And the breakthrough was when I quit my job and it was, I was with my back against the wall making $0 That's for what three it was. months. Like I said, I got to make things, things work. Yeah. That's a story I hear again and again in the industry is, is people making these transformational life changes when their backs are against the wall. Um, it, you know, so, so far as I've had people tell me that they purposely put themselves into situations. Yours wasn't on purpose. No. You didn't, you know, that, that conspired to happen. But that's a really, it's a really cool story. And it's funny, we, we, you know, we just did this e-commerce expert survey uh, where we you know, surveyed, we got 500 responses, and the number one answer, we gave a bunch of different things for what's the best thing about the e-commerce lifestyle. Uh, and the number one, uh, you know, there was like, you know, great money, making great money, uh, you know, the cars, the this, the that. But by far and away, the number one answer was living life on your own terms, mm -hmm. right? And if you've got, if you're, if you're, it's such a crush, soul crushing feeling to, to, you know, I went through this with, with my wife actually when she went back to work after uh, having our child. And this idea that we're paying someone to, uh, 
uh, you know, look after our child in daycare while she works at a job where, where she's pushing paper or doing something non-essential or where they have these structures in place like you have to work to seven even if you're not working. We don't really care if you're working, it's just you have to pay your dues yeah, yeah. and work till seven. That, that can be a real kind of mental torture for people, I think. Oh my God, it, honestly, if, I, if, it were, if it weren't for the internet and Facebook, and first of all, we wouldn't be here. We, have no. never, we would have never met each other. I would have never spoken to that event. And so, so many things wouldn't have happened. And I try to think what would happen if all these things wouldn't happen. Honestly, I would be back in a job and I would be really freaking miserable. Yeah. Really freaking miserable, working for some, you know, I'm really happy when, when someone comes and tells me, man, that I have everything I want in my life because I have a job, but I have my car, I have my house, I have my family, we're all healthy. And you tell me you're happy, I'm happy, I'm more than happy than you. Yeah. But most of the people aren't. Like 90% of the people I see working in 9 to 5, which is never a 9 to 5, yeah. it's 9 to 7, 9 to 8, anyway. So can this at times, happy. but... <laughs> yeah. They're not happy. I yeah. wasn't happy and I spent, when I started working, when I started working this on the side and I started realizing all these things with e-commerce, I started, I made a lot of people a lot of money, but I still made the same money. And you know, the, the first thing that you, you jump into is for the money, like yeah. one good, the, for the money, blah, blah. When you realize that it's so much bigger, when I had people like coming up to me and telling me, man, dude, I want to thank you because you, you helped me change my life or I went my daughter to a private school because of you or I bought a new uh, car or uh, simpler things. Like I was able to break from my, uh, from my parents' house to live on my own. Like even for this, like making, like you can't really wipe away that smile from my face. Yeah. Like helping someone else. Yeah. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's happening. It is happening. It is awesome. happening. Amazing. It's, you know, okay, so let's, let's jump tracks a little bit here. Like, what, uh, let's talk about, about analytics a little bit. And why do you think people, why do you think people neglect, first of all, do you think people neglect it? it oh my God, my they, sure, they sure yeah. do. They sure do. Why? I don't know, because they seem intimidated from analytics. They seem, and I'll tell you one thing, Google Analytics is not sexy, but you know, making money is sexy. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's really funny because I always thought of analytics really super sexy and it doesn't have to do with math. It does have to do with right things like honestly from the moment that, that I grew up, things that don't ha even have to do with my accounting job or the analytics. From the moment that I grew up and my father always told me like, uh, be, uh, be really careful where do you spend your money or how do you spend it. He, didn't, he never told me like, don't spend the money, mm -hmm. but he really told me like, be prepared and be really focused on where you spend your money. I had that really be mindset conscious. from, yeah, from the beginning. So for me, like that's, and I know that's one of the questions that you ask, but it's, it's one of my superpowers looking at data and I never look at data as like something boring because I got to give you an example, right? I was working with this, uh, this big agency in Greece. We were working with really, really big brands. We had the client spending 300,000 per month on Google AdWords, right? And I started analyzing the campaigns and blah, 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 and started seeing keywords. We were spending with per, per month $3,000 on keywords and campaigns that would never convert. Like 3,000 on the 300,000 dollars, it's just 1%, but it's still three grand. Three grand on the course of a year on campaigns that will never worth it, 36 grand. You can buy a brand new car. Yeah. Why do you need to spend money on the things that you don't, that um, they don't make sense, they will never convert? So that, that for me was like the time when I started working at the agency, like it clicked. So I said, okay, that's one thing. Oh, let's see what are the other things that we can do. So. I try to present it because I do a lot of public speaking, I do a lot of training, and I know that people are super intimidated by analytics. So I try to present it in such a simple way where even simple examples like case studies that I work with people, that I can present them that in a way that it feels like uh, the next uh, logical thing to do. For example, uh, I was working with a client, he was selling essential oils to the United States. And his targeting when he was doing Facebook ads was the whole United States. It doesn't really matter the budget that you have. If you spend with five, 10, $20 per ad set, even if you go $100 per ad set, the way that the Facebook algorithm is built, you can't really go ahead and grab the whole United States with $100. No. Even with $500 per ad set. Okay, so what you need to do is just look at your numbers. 
you go ahead, you see the analytics and you see, okay, let's click on United States. When you see the United States, it, it's, uh, it has a breakdown where it's by, uh, by region, by state, right? So we noticed that in all states, it, it had a really good conversion rate, like 4%, 3%, 4%. But in Colorado, he was doing triple that money. Yeah, triple, yeah. sorry, that uh, conversion rate. It was doing 12%. And I said, dude, let's shift all our focus, not all our focus, but let's shift our focus for a while in Colorado only. Boom, it blew up because now we were targeting the right customer. It's like you, we are selling like t-shirts for women and we are selling, hey, we are selling t-shirts for women to everybody, yeah. to men, to kids, to people who don't wear. So. When you actually get it down to see who is your real customer, then it becomes easy. It's it's really interesting with analytics. You know, every time I I'm not a train. You know, we I check the analytics on our site all the time, but I feel like I'm just sort of like poking around, and sometimes I'll find a nugget or things like that. But I feel I, I do feel intimidated because it's such a it's it's you know versus something like a Facebook where you're sort of guided through creating an ad. In analytics, it's like you're in a fighter cockpit in a way, right? <laughs> there's there's a lot more stuff going on there. So I think what people are really interested in are sort of systems that you know here are the here's here's how you do a, a ten point check on your analytics mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I assume like what are what's sort of your I don't I don't know. Can you can you talk a little bit about your framework when it comes to actually setting up analytics and what are what are some of the key metrics that 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 you, that people need to be focusing on if they're okay. not? Yeah, sure. So, first of all, what we got to do is make sure that uh, Google Analytics is tracking correctly. So, when we do install the code, we do some initial testing, we go ahead, we visit from mobile phone, from a desktop to see does it get the country, does it get the device, does it get all that kind of stuff. After we enable the e-commerce tracking, which is not enabled, and I don't really know why, but you have to do that manually, there are a few things, really, really simple things that no one has to be really intimidated by this. First of all, conversion rate, super important. We have to know how many people out of 100, and even because some of the people that might watch the interview are not really uh, tech savvy or what, don't really know what the conversion rate is, conversion rate is what is the amount, the percentage of the people that they get to convert? What does convert mean? They get to do a sale. They get to, to buy something from our website since we're talking about e-commerce. So is it 1%, like 1 out of 100 people, 2 out of 100? And one of the simplest things that you can do, if you have 1% conversion rate, which is an okay conversion rate. It's sort of like an industry baseline in a way, right? It's an like, industry yeah, baseline, yeah, let's and say. All sorts of things. You get one person out of 100 people, but you pay for those 100 people to come into your store and you get 1% conversion rate. Okay, let's say that this end, but what if you fix your, you look at your numbers and you fix your, your website in that way that you get a 2%. I won't go into 5 or 10%. Like you literally just double the amount of money that you are getting into your revenue simply by, by one thing. So. Conversion rate is super important. The other super important thing is average order value or AOV. So AOV, why? Because if I get on average on a customer, I get, let's say that he buys something which is 20 bucks every customer. And even if I get, I can get that 25 bucks or 30 bucks, literally I don't have to change anything else in my whole other strategy. So I'm spending the same, the exact same money, but I'm getting more from every customer. So conversion rate, super important. Average order value super important. Then there are more technical uh, technical stuff that they don't have to be super intimidating. So one of them is bounce rate, and I would stick to those three. Obviously, there are way more, but I don't want to overcomplicate it. So uh, conversion rate, average order value, and bounce rate. So what is bounce rate? How quickly people bounce they get off your website as soon as they see it. So the bounce rate is measured by a percentage. So the biggest the percentage, the worse that the, uh, our store is performed. So an average industry, industry it's let's say 65-70%, but still it means that 70% of the people we just paid with Facebook ads or mm -hmm. Google ads or whatever that is, they just came to our website and they didn't even uh, spend more than one second in our store. So even if you get an, an average, let's say, of 80%, which means that 80% of the people didn't even see your landing page, and you get it down to 75%, even 70, and even lower, it means that you start making more, more, and more money for every customer, sorry, every uh, visitor and potential customer that visits your store. So 
It doesn't really have to be intimidating. If you translate everything to money, then yeah. it becomes way easier. Way sexier. And those, and those three metrics are the key ones that people need to be looking at. I think that, that's a really valid point. So what about things like, re I think another thing people don't do a lot of is remarketing. Mm -hmm. I think that's something, uh, and so do you ever advocate sort of uh, different remarketing strategies based on, on on actions that people take in the store. A hundred percent. We can't really take all the all the poten all the visitors and potential customers and treat them the same way because we have to start splitting all the audience as different audiences as different audiences. Okay, so. There are the people that came, uh, they bounce. So we don't really care about them. If they, they never saw our landing page, we don't care. So we have the people that spend at least 15 to 20 seconds. I would say even more, but let's say, let's start from the people that at least they saw our product, like 15 seconds are more than enough. So people that viewed our content, viewed our landing page, viewed our product. So this is one audience. The next audience is the people who added to cart. Awesome. The next people are people who started initiating the checkout. So started filling all the information. And of course, obviously there are the people who purchase. So these are four, if I count it right, <laughs> four different audiences that we have to treat them differently. Why? Because if someone has added to cart, if, if even greater has started initiating checkout, he, he just needs a little push. So what I'm going to do is we are going to go into ad creatives where we are going to offer like free shipping or a coupon or even if people, when people are, and this is the biggest mistake, believe it or not, the biggest mistake I've seen is that when people start and they're getting that initial sale, say they're looking for another guy. No, like the guy, he just paid you money. He just make sure that you give him an amazing customer experience and make sure you, uh, you, uh, you turn him into a customer for life. Yep. Like it doesn't even matter if, even if next day you give him a coupon for 50% off. People, I, to I talk to them, to people uh, and tell them that and we say, Whoa, you're crazy. Like 50% off, it kills off my margin. That's your biggest mistake. Like, stop treating the guys like money in versus money out. A really good customer and the lifetime customer value, and that's number four of, yeah. of the metrics that I look at, is the super most important thing. I had customers working with people that they had customers coming back into their store in less than six months and buying for the 10th time. And yeah. honestly, they have an average order value of 100 bucks, 150 bucks. 200 bucks, not many, but still you have someone who has trusted you. You've given them an amazing customer experience. So they will come back and buy from you again. So definitely and obviously we need to treat all these audiences differently. We need to give them that little pop, the yeah. little kick to, oh, come, dude, buy from us again. We are a super cool store. And then once you get them that second time, it's like a whole other thing. They're no longer just that one-time customer. If you get them two times, you can get them again and again. Of course. This Again, this going back to the e-commerce expert survey, I think the, one of the number one pain points or the reasons that people were having tr problems with e-commerce is not enough repeat customers. And, and I, I think it, it, it goes through everything that we've talked about in this interview series back to uh, you know, creative and, and a customer experience and funnel, and then all the way back to strategy. It's like you sort of, it's like you have to build a business with repeat customers in mind to really make a go of it these days. Absolutely, 100%. And you don't really have to think this as a one-time thing. Like you have to think long-term. So how I like to think in, um, in e-commerce in general, I like to think to start building something that my two-year-old can take and run when she's like 20, 30 years old. Most of the people start, dropshipping is a great way to get started or print on demand or whatever someone is doing, but most of the people are in doing it for the money. They're not treating the customer right. And it's really funny because I do this kind of video. So I go and order from stores and then I go tape, uh, record myself in video uh, doing these things. People don't give an amazing customer experience. And this is why they have only one time buyers from the store because they didn't really care about the customer. They only cared about the money they put in their pockets and they go to find the next one. Even if you screw up and you tell the customer, 90% of the customers will appreciate it. Even like dropshipping, we're talking about really big delivery times, like yeah. taking sometimes even four weeks, six weeks, okay? And you had some really furious customers. If you take them and tell them, we are sorry, we apologize, you are right, here's a coupon, here's your money back, here's a refund, here's a coupon for next order. Whatever you do, when you please the customer, 
But we have to be really appreciate, uh, really grateful for the things that we get. Okay, when you get to show the customer that you really do care, okay, it's when the moment that the, the customer is customer for life. And I was really joking with, uh, with a friend the other day. We were having lunch and I said, man, who paid for this lunch? He said, I did. No, bro, you didn't. Our customers paid for that. Mm. Because we really do, did care and gave them an amazing customer experience. So when, they, when we really did care about them, they paid us money and they gave us a good value. We gave them a good value. We took some of the money and we are happy about it. Sounds like capitalism. Yes, yeah. <laughs> sounds like a good sounds like a good model. So, what I'm curious about, what are your goals? Like, what are your goals for 2018 and beyond? Where do you want to take, uh, you know, your corner of the e-commerce world? And the irony, make more money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where do you want to go? That's right. Make more money. Yeah. Actually, I want to educate more people. Uh, it's uh, it's one of my goals when I really first started to really do care. So, I read a book once where it said, "Who will cry when you die?" Okay, and obviously, except, I talk about death a lot, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, so, but except from uh, your family, your kids, and blah, 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 I want to make an impact in this world. And I said, really, big or small, it doesn't matter. I will give out my best shot. So, uh, one of my goals for 2018 and beyond is to be able to educate people, make them not be really, really intimidated by their numbers, and not only that, like, to help them understand that e-commerce is a super legit business, internet is responsible for many relationships, friendships, businesses, millionaires, and experiences, all the amazing experiences, experiences, yeah, all that kind of stuff, and make them realize that if they treat it as a real business, the business will treat them right too. So if you get, and it's not only about analytics. Analytics is is what people know me about because I always talk about it. And I say it in a really funny way with my weird uh, Greek accent. I say Google Analytics, so people laugh at me <laughs> over this. But other than that, I like to help people to understand, to stop playing small. I was one of the people who played really small. So the people who are just getting started to make them realize that they can do whatever they want in this life. And life too small. And for the people who are already in game and they have a really good mindset, they're really motivated to make them understand that they're stop leaving money on the table. Honestly, I see it all day long. This is one of my superpowers. I can go ahead and tell you, bro, you need to do this, this, and this, and this, and I put my sign on it. Like, I, I will start working with clients and I tell them, like, I don't need you to pay me until I show you how you can make money. No, no, until I show you the money, not yeah. how you can make money. This is how confident I am. Like, even from the small stuff I told you, like raising the average order value, or raising the conversion rate, increasing the conversion rate, or decreasing the balance rate, immediate quick wins. So I want more people to know that about and I want to create some more success stories. As I told you, one of the greatest things in my life is when I get hit up from people all over the world, literally, and I'm even more happier when it's a developing country where you give them like Pakistan and w without wanting to sound like a racist or something like that, like these are guys that are really, really feeling it and they're getting way underpaid and when you make them realize the true potential and they say, dude, I made it, I made a hundred, a hundred dollars for them, it's like, oh my God, there, there's a, a big smile on my face. Yeah. So I like to get uh, more smile, more big, uh, more success stories and more big smiles in my face, right? Yeah. And I think that's what we're trying to do here at ISAC Training as well. Absolutely. So we're coming to the end here. You know, I, I don't know that you're the biggest Marvel movie fan necessarily, yeah. <laughs> but if you had to be a, an Avenger, which which one might you choose? Probably I would be Doctor Strange. Like, <laughs> I like to think of myself like the geek I am, like the nerd I am. When, when people go out and have fun and they party, I go out and watch webinars or look at things I can change into stores on how we can make more, more things. So I think I'm a little bit like Doctor Strange. Uh, people call me the uh, Mr. Google Analytics that's or right. Doctor Analytics. Doctor Analytics, I believe. Doctor yeah. Analytics. <laughs> so that's one of the things that I really, really enjoy because I said Google Analytics is not sexy, but making money is. And I like making money. A hundred percent. Very nice. Thank you for coming. Awesome. Thank today. you. Yeah, Thank it's you. really good. I really look forward. I should announce also, I think it is clear, but Dr. Analytics will be a part of the upcoming e-commerce all-star secrets course, uh, our free mini course that we'll be putting out uh, for the world to learn the core skills that they need to grow an extraordinary business. Not just a 
not just to how, you know, they'll learn how to get by. That's the beauty of this course. You're going to learn how to get started, what mindset you need to have, and some of the core skills. But we're also going to be providing a lot of things that, that will allow you to take it to, truly to the next level and really have an untapped mindset. That's the thing I'm noticing from all of these interviews. Uh, and and frankly, all the people in the world who are, who are making headlines, for good and for bad, is they have this unbridled will. They have this, they, they're not small thinkers, right? They're people that are able to look at an opportunity and, and really think big about it. And, and, and I think that's what that runs through, through this whole course. And I'm really excited to be putting it on. I'm excited to be part of it. And like, guys, I'll make analytics sexy, I promise. I'll, I'll try, I'll, okay, I'll try my best. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks again. Awesome. Thank all you. All right. Thank you. Cheers.